back to Science Rocks. Every year, FETC honors top STEM programs, and this year, we have a local winner. Congratulations to the winner of the elementary school division, Douglas L. Jamerson Jr. Elementary School, St. Petersburg, Florida. This award recognizes innovation in the field of STEM. And as we have showcased in past episodes of Science Rocks, Douglas L. Jamerson Elementary School in St. Petersburg is doing amazing things. After the awards presentation, Magnet Coordinator Lucas Hefty conducts a workshop in the X-Ball Hall talking about some of their innovative programs. Principal Christy Moody is proud of their work. We have a STEM magnet school and um, we're excited to celebrate the work that we do every day. We really believe in it and that it builds opportunity for kids and, and brings equity to education for all of the children that go to our school. So it's a really nice validation of our work and the achievement that we're getting with our students and our staff. That's wonderful. I know for our superintendent, Dr. Michael Grego, he has a big initiative for STEM and, and a big push for STEM. At your school, we also have two STEM academies. So on top of this, we're doing so much for our students. What does your school offer for potential students? So at our school, our magnet program is for every child that comes to Jamerson, and a lot of people ask that question, and then they say things like, so what does engineering look like in kindergarten? It starts with um, kindergartners working in a team to develop a chair for Goldilocks, and they get to choose any material that they want in their classroom, and there's a lot of failure in that process of, so how can we make a chair for a more mass Goldilocks and for a less mass Goldilocks and it works all the way up through each grade level has different engineering design challenges so we have Lego towers and they always have design constraints all the way through our fifth graders build bridges and much more complex projects but we really want our kids not to be engineers, we want them to have that opportunity, but we want them to be problem solvers. We want them to persevere, and you learn those things through engineering. You engineer things in your everyday life, even when you don't know you are. And we want them also to think about, you know, trying on those STEM careers as something that they might think of in the future. You wouldn't be able to do what you're doing without some key partnerships. Um, how is those? How are those relationships important to you? We really can't do what we do without partnerships. We have a lot of our families and we have a lot of community partners that are engineers that come in and give us ideas, give us feedback on the design challenges that we use. They help us um, find equipment so that our kids can create experiences with different types of equipment that engineers use. And there are so many fields where science and engineering come into play that a lot of people don't consider. So we really have, um, we have a ton of people who come in and just give us ideas and then just present those opportunities to students. So how does winning this award enhance what you're doing at Jamerson? Um, I think families are starting to understand what magnet schools are about and I think they're starting to understand different opportunities. Um, at Jamerson we really try to build a school that has racial diversity, that has socioeconomic diversity and I think sometimes people think oh well my child doesn't know how to read yet, so I don't know if they would make it into your magnet program. And I tell them, any child can come to Jamerson. I don't care if they can write their name. I would love for them to be able to, but we will teach them everything that they need to know. I feel like getting this award shows what we're doing with kids, and they come at all levels, and that's okay. But it really proves that when you work hard and when you commit to working with every child and building them up from where they are, you get those results. I believe that you can, if you want something bad enough, you can stick to it, you can, you can do it. That was the message of the keynote speaker, former NASA astronaut Leland Melvin, and his story is amazing. He is the only person drafted into the NFL who has also flown in space. But I think the, the major thing that happened in my life was that I had a community of people that believed in me. And it was always these educators who both of my parents were middle school teachers. And everyone had literally had a hand in my development. Okay. It was his tenacity of fighting through tough adversity that made both of those dreams come true. Leland tells the thousands of educators assembled to hear a story that his failures made him a stronger person. Anything we do can be a teaching moment, can be an experiential hands-on moment, so that they can make a connection 
bigger space around them in the world. Leland's journey through professional football and then NASA gives him a unique perspective on education. And there were some fun moments in space that combined both of his two passions. And then take the hit, you know? When I started to learn physics in high school, and, and actually physics and geometry, when I was running the routes in football, I was then recreating the angles that we learned in, in geometry. You know, so, so if you use the thing that they're doing and loving to do and reinforce it in the classroom and say, hey, if you know physics, you'll be better footballer. You know, what, what the collisions and the impacts and the vectors. So if, if two things are coming at each other, you know, if you just move a little bit and you have a glancing blow versus a full on blow, that's a vector of that force. That's a, that's a you know, subset of that force, so you won't get hurt. Or, you know, so you use that to have them start thinking about how. Leland says that we cannot start STEM education soon enough. You can start STEM as soon as a kid comes out of the womb, basically. I mean, STEM or STEAM, when they're hearing, or someone's beating on a pot and they hear this, it's an acoustics experiment. So every opportunity you have to just observe the world you're taking in science and engineering and maybe not mathematics yet, but you know, these things are part of the children as they're developing and they're, they're, they're sensing things. So that's, that's, that's science right there. So Leland also talks about igniting students' passions using today's technologies, which lead to working with colleagues from around the world. I mean, you can, I was talking to uh, some folks in Japan about having kids use Skype to do a project together. So when we build the International Space Station, everyone's not in the U.S. working together. We have people all over the world, you know, who are not doing fit checks in the same place. You know, Russia sent up a piece, we sent up a piece, <laughs> and they worked in space, you know. So we, we have to learn how to do things using the technology remotely to ensure that we advance our civilization. And Leland sees this firsthand during his meet and greet in Expo Hall when a teacher asks him to Skype with her fifth grade class in rural southwestern Iowa. Class on. Okay, here we go. You're going to invite entire here. fifth grade class in southwestern Iowa. Wave to the astronaut, folks. Hey guys, how you doing? <laughs> well, I'm look. Cool. I'm with your teacher here, and we're going to talk about how you can be astronauts one day. The things you have to do: one, eat your green beans. Two, listen to your teachers and parents, right? Always, yes. Three, study really hard, okay? And just go for it. Do and the then pictures. find out what you're passionate about. If you're passionate about something, just go for it, do it. And then you can find space, you can be whatever you want to be. Do y'all believe that? I don't want to hear it. Can you Come can on, you, you can do better than that. It. That's more <laughs> like it, all right. Well, study hard, okay? We're After the press conference, I asked Leland what advice he had to take our STEM programs to the next level. I think you, for a district looking at STEM, you should definitely get all the things, the science and the psychology, engineering and mathematics, but find out what are the needs in that community and focus on the STEM projects around the things that you can help solve problems to help people in that community. Because if you're building a drone or you're building something, how can that drone help look at an abandoned field that, where people are getting hurt or things are happening. So maybe you're using that to solve problems in the community. Great advice from an impressive ambassador of STEM education in our country. When we come back, I'll show you how we are bringing some of the latest robotic technology to our STEM academies this spring. Science Rocks returns in a moment.